Well, I was putting this video off because I don't like talking about this show or the people that make this show. I think they're awful, awful, lazy, uncreative people. But uh, I'm kind of behind on my next Secret Lore video. So here we are, talking about the new show from the creators of Brickleberry and Paradise PD, Farzar. This show is one of the worst things I've seen in my entire life, and I genuinely mean that. It is a rehash of everything that was done in Brickleberry and Paradise PD. And Paradise PD was a rehash of everything done in Brickleberry. So it's like a double cheaper bootlegged version of the same jokes, the same characters, the same plot lines, setups, betrayals, twists. There is nothing redeeming about this show in any way in my mind. I have nothing nice to say about it except the theme song is really good. And I think that's because Netflix insists on your show having a very good theme song. It's like in YouTube videos where the first 10 seconds you're supposed to be very high energy. Bad example of that for this video. I think that's what Netflix wants to do with the intro sequence. You look at something like Inside Job, it has a banging intro. Bojack Horseman, banging intro. F is for Family, bang. Like every single show I see, amazing intros on Netflix when it comes to adult animation. Arcane, I mean, the list is, it just keeps on going. Even Big Mouth's intro is pretty fluid and great. It makes the rest of the animation in the show look terrible by comparison because it's so fluid and creative and there's so much going on. I think that's mostly thanks to Netflix and not the two morons that make this show. And now I don't want to be overly mean because these two, the guys that make it, I think it's Wacko O'Gwin. I should look real quick. Waco O'Gwin, Wacko O'Gwin, and Roger Black. These two guys could be the nicest people on the planet. In fact, I think they might be just nice, goofy guys that were stunted in eighth grade. They got a lot of laughs back then making dick jokes and just never stopped. They made a career out of it, which more power to them. The fact that these people have been able to sell the same show three times is astounding. And no, it's not like Family Guy compared to American Dad, all right? Those two shows are pretty drastically different in how they handle things. It has drastically different characters, different styles of comedy, crazy different storylines. These shows are the exact same thing, just dropped into different locations. This one is sci-fi. Paradise PD was a police station and Brickleberry was a park, a forest park, whatever you call it, forest reserve. I, don't, I haven't seen Brickleberry in a long time, but I do remember a few jokes from Brickleberry that showed up in Paradise PD. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. I'll call it a callback. But then those jokes showed up again in Farzar and some of the same characters showed up again in Farzar. And that's when I realized the creators of Brickleberry, Paradise PD and Farzar only have one idea. And that one idea has been camouflaged three separate times and sold to networks because when Brickleberry first got canceled and there was all this fan outcry when it came to Netflix, people thought these guys were onto something. When in reality, they just happened to line up perfectly in a point of time where middle schoolers were able to get on Netflix on their iPods or whatever, where they were saying, hey mom, can I log into Netflix on my phone? Can I, can I get whatever? And they would watch it behind their backs. You wanna know how I know that? Because that's what I did in middle school. I remember watching Brickleberry and Family Guy and all these shows because I would get the logins to streaming services from my parents and watch it behind their backs. I guarantee you that is why Brickleberry has any form of success. It is from middle schoolers, which is fine. All right, it's fine if that's your core demographic. That's perfectly fine by me. I always say Big Mouth is a show that is aimed more towards like a teenage crowd, a kind of high school crowd, because it is really immature. It's really gross out. At that point in time in my life, I would have loved some of the jokes in Big Mouth. And frankly, I would have liked some of the jokes in Farzar, except the only problem is I've seen the jokes in Farzar before in Paradise PD. And I've seen the jokes in Paradise PD before in Brickleberry. So it's all the same thing. It's the same shit over and over again. And I don't know how it keeps on happening. There is some crazy conspiracy with these two. Maybe they're, they're the nicest guys on the planet. They're really good at pitching. They know all the right people. I frankly don't know. When I see these two in interviews, they seem kind of like nice guys, Roger Black especially, but Waco O'Gwin kind of seems like he has a chip on his shoulder from 
all these other adult animated shows surpassing his. There's one clip where he like compares his show to Futurama and it's like, well, comparing our show to Futurama or Rick and Morty, I mean, Brickleberry came before Rick and Morty. So who ripped off who? That's basically what I was saying. Here's that clip right here, if you don't believe me. But yeah, what the joke was a little kid was like, is this like Futurama Rick and Morty, which we knew that was the two things we were going to get. And, you know, comparing our stuff to Rick and Morty is kind of crazy. We Brickleberry came out before Rick and Morty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not every sci-fi is our show is nothing like it does have sci-fi elements like that but it's not it's one of our shows is if you want to compare it to anything compared to Brickleberry and paradise pd because that's what it's like like he seems like an asshole that that seems like a bitter asshole who is upset that his one idea that he's packaged three different ways isn't taking off in the way that he would hope it, it's not beloved in the way that something like rick and morty is beloved or Family Guy, or BoJack Horseman, or all these massive animated shows out there that are selling things at like GameStop and Hot Topic and all these different stores, they have all this merchandising. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. No one's buying merchandising for Brickleberry. No one's buying merchandising for Paradise PD. He is at the lower level of the creative spectrum when it comes to like marketing and merchandising. And I think he is like bitter about that. When in reality, if you're an artist and you're creating something, or if you're a comedian, your main goal should just be to make the people around you laugh. You shouldn't get caught up in all this garbage. And of course, it's easier said than done, but the fact that this guy can't come up with any new ideas, the fact that this guy and Roger Black, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lump them together because they created these shows together. They did a bunch of comedy stuff together. Not really my thing, but some people like it. Some people are into it, and I'm willing to let that slide for those people, but for anyone that defends Farzar, for anyone that says this show is anything but a rehash of Paradise PD and a rehash of Brickleberry, if you're saying that this is a new idea, a new show, you're a moron. Plain and simple moron. Like, this is the exact same shit as before. And I cannot believe they get to keep on doing this. It's just shocking to me. When we see all these different adult animated shows come and go, when we see stuff like Tuke and Birdie get cut short, when we see stuff like Bojack Horseman get rushed to its finale, when we see stuff like F is for Family get at a season or a series finale, really, that felt incredibly rushed because Netflix decided to end the show. That show definitely needed another season to work out all the stuff it had set up with Frank Murphy and the family. But they had to rush to a conclusion and it kind of worked, but these shows have been hurt by this system. And these two guys have found a way to exist inside the adult animation system with the lowest amount of effort, with the least amount of creativity and effort I've ever seen in any, anything ever, anything ever. I, I'm like rambling at this point. I'm repeating myself. I'm, I'm sure I sound like a crazy person, but I sat down, I watched all 10 episodes of this, all 10 episodes. And it, it, it's just, a pain to sit through, especially if you've seen the other two shows, because then you know it's just a rehash of everything else. I have nothing nice to say about it other than that intro sequence, and we've already stated that that was probably more Netflix than these two. I I, I don't know e even where to begin when it comes to ranking this show. There, there's been bad shows before I've talked about. I've talked about stuff like Santa Inc. Santa Inc. was a show that was just inept at comedy. It didn't understand how to present its ideas. And it had ideas that would work. It had an interesting art style. It had talented people behind it, funny people behind it, but it just couldn't get it working because it over-politicized stuff. It made a bunch of mistakes that were just, you know, kind of shocking, but also understandable for someone that kind of lives in a bubble. That, that was the case with Santa Inc. It was like super Hollywood elites kind of talking down to people for eight episodes or 10 episodes, wherever long Santa Inc was. This is, just a rehash of the same stuff over and over again that you've seen before if you've seen Brickleberry in Paradise PD. And frankly, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this before, where it's this repetitive, where it's this uninspired, where it's this empty. Like, creatively, this is empty. It is the antithesis of creativity. And I just have no more to say about it than that. I'm gonna leave it there because I've been rambling for a good bit now. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you. What does Farzar get? One out of ten. Well, that's one. Out, no, no problem in my mind whatsoever. If you like this show, if you laugh at the jokes, great. I hate the idea that someone enjoying something and laughing at something 
makes them stupid because you're having fun, you're laughing, that's fine. But if you're sitting down and you think this is an original show with original jokes, with original characters, you're lying to yourself. You're tricking yourself. This is a rehash. It is a repackaging of something that at this point is like 10 years old with Brickleberry. And it's embarrassing. If I'm the creators of this show, if I'm Roger Black and I'm Waco O'Gwyn, I should feel ashamed of myself. I should feel creatively bankrupt in nearly every area. It's just a damned shame. But I will end on a somewhat positive note. Kind of, I guess. Maybe a call to action, we'll call it. These two clearly know how to work the system. They clearly know how to get shows picked up specifically by Netflix. I think Paradise PD is on like part three now, which is shocking. And I would not be surprised if Farzar gets another season. I would not be shocked because these guys know this system clearly. So please, for the love of God, creators of this show, Roger Black and Waco Gwynn, try something new. Take a goddamn risk. Do something with the opportunity you have. Because right now you are squandering something that thousands of artists wish they could even get close to. This idea of working for Netflix, having your own show that gets 10 episodes. The second season of Inside Job got eight episodes. This one got picked up for 10 right off the bat. Paradise PD keeps getting 10 episodes right off the bat. You are getting a major opportunity and are squandering it at every possible turn. So please, for the love of God, do something new. That's where I'll leave it. Thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned for a new secret lore video next week. I don't even know what movie it's going to be yet. I have a couple ideas. If you haven't seen the secret lore series, it's a hoot. I make up fake theories about movies and present them as real and trick some people into thinking I'm a moron, which doesn't take too much because... Eh, and there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and subscribe to become a cow, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.